Thanks for joining us for the Member Excite presentation. The Member Excite presentation is informative, interesting to the audience, and showcases the strengths of the presenter as an entrepreneur and their area of expertise. It's not a sales pitch, it's a 10 minute educational and insightful exploration into what they do. And of course, it's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our BX Excite presenter today. Matt Sloan from Matthew Sloan Loan Market to present to us on How Should Debt Be Consolidated? Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Matt Sloan. So what I'm going to talk about today, everyone, is debt consolidation. So, and effectively, in Australia, the, the average household has over $20,000 in consumer debt, which is, is what I mean by consumer debt is personal debt. So that's things like car loans, personal loans, and more recently things like buy now, pay it, pay later. It's like after pay, for example. Um, so what I'll show you this morning is a few different scenarios uh, and a few different solutions for those scenarios. How, how, how we help people get out of debt and get moving forward with their finances. So there's two main solutions. Uh, number one being personal loan. Number two, refinancing a mortgage. Um, third solution or what comes afterwards, it, depending on the client or depending on the person's um, needs and, and how they got into debt, could be um, a bit of money management as well. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about the money management today, just in the interest of time, pardon the pun. Um, <clears throat> so personal loans, so personal loans, for example, the advantages of a personal loan Obviously, they're shorter term, so th usually three, five, or seven year loan terms. Um, so hence, over that period, less interest might be paid on the loan. Um, personal loans are fast to approve. Uh, they don't need security, so they don't need collateral. So you don't need to secure the loan to a um, piece of equipment like a car, a boat, or even a house. Um, hence, why they're fast, but um, borrowing capacity might be higher with a personal loan as opposed to a mortgage um, and they have smaller loan sizes so personal loans generally um, can start from 5000 and upwards whereas a mortgage would be at least 20000 Now the advantages for refinancing and consolidating into a home loan, um, obviously lower interest rate at the moment. Um, convenience of one repayment as well and also personal loans are limited um, in amount so personal loans generally maximum might be 50 to 60 thousand whereas a mortgage can obviously go a lot higher now so scenario one and if you open the slides so scenario one is say John and Mary so two people have a goal of getting into the property market uh, in the future so they have $50,000 in credit card debt. Now, currently, on, on, a, on average, so this is, um, we cal the way I've calculated uh, their minimum repayments was at 3.8% of the limit. So that would vary between credit cards, but just in this example, um, their monthly repayment is $1,900 a month. On that, on that credit card debt. So that's seriously going to hamper a lot of people saving their $50,000 to get into, um, into the market. So as they don't have a mortgage, we have to consolidate that debt into a personal loan. So in general, personal loans have higher rates than mortgages. Um, that's primarily because the risk to the lender um, of losing money is higher. So if, if they've got a loan secured to a house, i.e. a mortgage, um, then the bank can call on and sell that house if they need to. Now, many lenders do unsecured personal loans, so that means the rate's gonna be, be higher. So the primary factors um, of, what, of how the lenders would calculate an interest rate on a personal loan, there's not a set interest rate like there is generally with mortgage, mortgages. So a personal loan lender would look at a person's, say, credit file, their credit history, whether they're a homeowner or not, um, 
the type of employment they have, whether they're self-employed, PAYG, whether they're full-time, casual, um, and then even the amount of debt as a percentage to their income as well. So all those things factor into what someone's interest rate might be. So it's handy knowing what we do is find that out up front so we can you know, work out whether or not consolidating that debt into a personal loan is actually going to be beneficial, which is very important. <clears throat> So that, so John and Mary, they have $50,000 in credit card debt, so by consolidating that debt, um, they now, their new monthly payment is reduced quite a lot. Um, so it's gone from 1900 basically down to 1300 So I've worked that out as an, at an interest rate of 10%, uh, which is about middle, middle ground at the moment with personal loans, depending on their circumstances. It can be higher, it can be lower. So that's a monthly saving for them at just under six hundred and seventy dollars per month. That's allow them. To, that's going to allow them a couple of things. That's going to allow them to save more money um, for the for their deposit for a house because that's their original goal was to get into the property market. Um, the other thing that's going to do as well when they get to the point of wanting to go approach a lender to borrow money to buy a house, their borrowing capacity is actually going to be potentially higher because their monthly commitment is lower. So it does, does two things to achieve their goals. <clears throat> now the second scenario that I've got there, so Bill and Jane, they already have a mortgage. So they have a $450,000 mortgage. Their home is worth $800,000. Um, so due to COVID, they've run into a few issues. So they have, they've run up $30,000 in credit card debt and they also have a $15,000 personal loan. So their goal, is to pay off their mortgage as quickly as possible. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. But the, for them in this situation, a $450,000 mortgage um, at 2% is 1663 a month. The $30,000 in credit card debt is $1,140 a month. $15,000 personal loan at 7%, which is relatively low, is $297 a month. So their current situation, they're paying $3,100 per month, every month, just for their debts. So the, so the plan for them, refinance their mortgage, consolidate the debts, uh, so they have one single repayment, not three, uh, which can help people's mindset, which is another, another conversation again. Um, but it's also gonna help them pay off their mortgage faster. And how they do that, so the new loan, the new mortgage now would be $496,000 and $500. So the, the mortgage has gone up. So they're gonna be, so that's not always the best solution for, for people. However, let's just say almost worst case scenario, but not quite. They've had a few late payments and we have to go to a non-conforming lender. So let's just say at 5% interest rate, which is quite high, not the highest, but it's, closer to the highest and the best interest rate. Their monthly payment is gonna be 2,662 in total. But if they're, if, they've been, if they're well behaved and they've been paying everything on time and they're at 2%, their rate's gonna be 1,800. So, so the difference there from their original payments is $438 a month. That's at 5%. So they've gone from 2% mortgage to 5%, they've increased their loan, but they've consolidated the other two loans. So they've got one monthly payment. So there's a $438 difference per month. So probably thinking now, a lot of people would say, say, well, what's the benefit? The real benefit is now how they manage their money moving forward. So that $438 a month that we've created in cash flow, if they go and blow that at, on the horses or somewhere else, well, it's not gonna benefit them. If they redirect that now into their mortgage to make additional repayments, <coughs> that's going to save them a lot of interest in the long run. And I've done the calculation for that. Um, so over 30 years, that's going to save them $67,000 in interest in the long run. Um, so the benefit for the mortgage is, is obviously that now is going to reduce their 30 year loan term down quite a way. So that'll take seven years and 11 months, so just shy of eight years off their mortgage without actually increasing their monthly repayments. 
So, so what? So in general, what, to determine the real benefit to someone, it's really important to understand not just where they're at because you can get a snapshot of you know people's incomes, liabilities, assets, but it's really important to find out where they where they're headed. Like Alan said before as well, is what what to, what do they want to achieve? Do they want to consolidate debt, pay off their mortgage, invest in property, buy their first home? A lot of the time, the the best solution is is all, well, it's always based on what they want to achieve. And it's bridging that gap going from where they're at to where they want to get to.